Hey all, here we are in a test scene today, setting up Prism FX for the Universal Render Pipeline, uh, the new Prism 2 version which supports URP Render Graph. So I've just gone ahead, opened up this scene, and this is a world space canvas that we're gonna play around with here today. I have got a volume profile, I've added Prism to it, and uh, done all the setup by adding Prism to the URP settings. So let's go ahead and use it. Uh, we're gonna uh, enable use color correction here and uh, we're going to make this scene a little bit cooler so that uh, we're going to try and hit the white balance a little bit better from this photo uh, and there we go that's looking to me pretty white we can even play with the uh, the tint a little bit here but I don't think we'll do that too much and uh, even the exposure compensation we can uh, tweak here as well Next up, we are going to add a little bit of bloom because our goal today is to simulate an old vintage manual focus camera lens that has some of these old aberrations on it. So once we enable bloom, we're gonna be able to see that we can increase or decrease. And now what this really simulates well is the kind of bloom that you're gonna get on an old manual focus lens that is at a wide open aperture, maybe f1.5, f1.8, uh, even f2.0. Lots of these manual lenses do lose contrast and that effectively shows up as bloom uh, like this and most physically correct is to not put a bloom threshold on it uh, if you you know if you're using it in a game you can put a bloom threshold on it and that works just as well but for our purposes here today we're just going to turn up the intensity slider a little bit and that is going to get us that old style aberration effect that we want next up let's add some lens distortions uh, in fact what we're going to do is actually going to reset all of these to zero before we uh jump into them at all but let's go ahead and add a little bit of vignette so vignette is basically what happens when an old lens doesn't have uh, enough resolution right out to the corners and it doesn't fully cover the image frame usually the image frame of a camera sensor um, and this normally happens uh, when the lens is again at a wide open aperture so by increasing the vignette strength there a little bit again we're just helping to give that feel of an old vintage lens that's wide open now fringing this is a very important effect which not many other post-processing uh, pipelines including unity's built-in pipeline has but you can actually zoom in here and we can see what this lens fringing does and it actually creates a very simple fringing effect on these contrasting edges and if you've ever used old manual focus uh, camera lenses before and look even some new lenses do this also but you will know that fringing when at a very wide open aperture is very very common and it helps take a lot of that digital sharpness and digital harshness off the final image. We're also gonna go in here and play with some barrel distortion. We're gonna say that we're probably using uh, probably a wide angle lens, so we're gonna go for some negative barrel distortion. And the Petzval distortion feature here as well is a great feature to simulate some of the more unique older lenses, particularly lenses like, you know, you've got the Carl Zeiss Biotar designs, the Carl Zeiss, uh, maybe Disc Distagon, but lots of those old kind of uh, Zeiss designs, um, just by a little bit of pet spell distortions, lenses like the Helios 44, which are very famous for this as well. And as you can see, that does distort our uh, straight lines towards the edges of the frame, whilst keeping the center of the frame perfectly straight, which is quite accurate to what lenses actually do. And what we're gonna do here is, we're just gonna crank this up to max, just so you can see the maximum chromatic aberration. And this is like, this is broken lens level of chromatic aberration. We don't want a broken lens here. We just want a lens that's, you know, not perfectly put together. Maybe some of the elements are a little bit, um, a little bit wonky, and, and that's what this does here. So you can see down in the corners, after putting that chromatic aberration on, we've lost even more resolution in these corners, which is exactly what happens when you're using older lenses, whilst keeping the center of the shame very, very. Uh, sharp, sorry, the center of the frame, I should say. Uh, now, what else could we use here? We could uh, add on a little bit of sharpening and this could simulate, uh, well, whatever you really want it to, but uh, there are many cameras, of course, which have a uh, sharpening kind of filter built in and post. We're not really gonna need it for this one. And we could also add a tone map. Um, and then with this tone map in the new Prism version, you actually have the ability to set a white point, as you can see here. So we can set the white point um, quite easily, which I think around about there is looking pretty good for a white point. 
And just like that, we have got a very basic setup which incorporates a lot of very common effects found on older camera lenses. And if I go ahead and toggle off the volume, you can see what it looked like before. And this is just purely digital. This is sharpness corner to corner. This is like, you know, a $100,000 or $200,000 lens straight from maybe Arri that's used in only the best Hollywood blockbusters that has this sort of ultra clinical sharpness end to end, particularly at a wide open aperture. But then once we add prism here, once we fix it up, once we add some of those lens aberrations and give the frame a little bit of character, uh, we can see the power of prism. So I hope this has been helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Pick up prism effects now on the asset store to level up your post-processing.